UK is stepping up its climate ambition. The Prime Minister will pledge this week that carbon emissions will be brought down more in a shorter time frame, not 80% by 2050, but nearly that, 78% by 2035. As that is put into law, it will mean major change on heating, power, insulation, transport and food. Tom Burke is chairman of the E3G think tank, which works on climate. He's also a former government advisor. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. Can you spell out what policy changes you think will be needed in order to deliver this new ambition? The most important thing, I think, is to focus his policy uh, around th energy efficiency, around wind and solar, and around storage uh, of electricity and the management of the grid. At the moment, it, the, the sort of policy to implement this is a bit of a, a Boris blunderbuss, and is a huge range of marginal things rather than a real concentration of effort on those things that will deliver the most emissions reductions in the fastest time and will also drive bills down at the, at, uh, as well, people's energy bills down as well. Okay, it's interesting you didn't mention cars in that. Uh, no, I think we're well on our way with cars already. In a sense, the effort to, as it, we, we, the government brought forward the target for moving the transition to uh, electric vehicles already, and that says that we're banked. So we're going to do the thing with vehicles. Mm -hmm. What's good about this announcement, of course, is the addition of aviation and shipping into the target, because those were the bits that were missing before and are a very considerable part of our emissions burden. So taking that step will also be very helpful. Um, the Committee on Climate Change has suggested that low carbon investment, the government's low carbon investment, must scale up to £50 billion a year in the UK. What, what kinds of things would they go on? Exactly the kind of thing you're talking about, energy efficiency and things like that. Ultimately, the government is going to have to pay for part of the cost of that, whether it's in our homes or other buildings, otherwise it just won't happen. No, I don't think that's true. I think actually what the government must do is two things. One, it must certainly pay some of it uh, of the money as public expenditure. But two, it must have a consistent policy that goes to scale that investors can rely on. Most of the money that's needed to achieve the Climate Change Committee's targets is going to come from the private sector. But it will only come from the private sector if private sectors are confident that the government will stick to its policies and not change them, as it's actually had a rather bad track record of doing in the past. So then you can use your public expenditure, and we've created a new device with the idea of a national infrastructure bank to help uh, make sure that that private investment is directed properly, but it does require some public investment in order to leverage that much greater private investment. Mm. But do you agree that the scale of that public investment is around £50 billion a year? I'm not, I'm not sure that that's absolutely right. That, that's the Climate Change Committee's view of things, but there are lots of different es estimates out there, are lots of different models that give you different uh, amounts of money and different partition between what needs to come from the private sector and the public sector. Do we need to spend a lot of public money? Yes, we do. Do we need to signal that in the forthcoming spending review? Yes, we do. But what the exact amount of money uh, is, I think, is still much more open to contention. What's clear, however, is if you're spending a small number of billions on uh, uh, getting uh, emissions down and you're spending 27 billion on roads which puts emissions up, you clearly haven't got your priorities right. Mm. So does that mean that you, you going back on some of the commitments you've already made on things like roads? I think it does. I think it would be much better if we were spending uh, uh, one and a half billion a year, say, on energy efficiency uh, than spending the same sort of amount on building new roads that we may not actually need. What, what about internationally? Because obviously all of this is part of us hosting the big Glasgow Climate Summit later in the year. Um, once we do this, then does it become a blueprint for other countries? I mean, obviously there are very you know different um, sizes of coffers when when it, when you you look around the world, what countries can afford, and of course a lot of them would say, well, they've industrialised much later than than us, and so the burden should not fall equally. <laughs> well, the burden certainly won't fall equally, that's for sure. Uh, the Prime Minister's announcement uh, this week is a really important first step on making Glasgow a success. But you're right, the G7 in, in uh, Cornwall in the summer is where he must be equally bold. And what he's got to do is to mobilise the financial firepower of the major economies 
to help all those economies who's uh, really been very badly damaged by the pandemic to play their full part in doing it. So he needs to top what he's done uh, this week with what he's going to do in July in Cornwall by mobilizing all that money through the uh, uh, overseas development assistance, through the uh, World Bank, through the IMF, through the other international, international financial institutions so that you really are putting some financial firepower behind the, the climate change globally. Tom Burke from the E3G think tank. Thank you.